Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rohit and this is the day 6 of the service portal training. In this session, I'll talk about that how we can call uh, from the client side to that we can call to the server side. So very basic thing is that let's say that let's understand the requirement. So somebody, uh, somebody click the close incident. Once we click the uh, close incident, this incident has to be resolved. So let's say that I'm going to create or I'm going to build some actions. So when somebody click that actions, it has to be has perform that actions like if I click the close incident, this incident has to be closed and then um, uh, the status should be changed. So that might be our requirement. Let's understand how we are achieving. Very first thing is that um, if I open this widget, so control and um, right click if I open this uh, incident, the first thing first I told you that how can we call from HTML to the uh, client side. So we already uh, declare a functions called um, user actions in this button and when somebody click on that user actions, this is going to the user actions and then once we click that, it is performing certain actions or it is going to that um, client script. So basically from HTML, we are going to the client script. So there is, so to disappoint you, there is no way that we can call any server uh, server side script. Basically when, what we have to do, once somebody click the close incident, we have to go back to the incident table and then update the status of the incident as a result, right? So we can't do first of all in, the, in our client side. And if we do in the server side, uh, if we declare any function and do the server side, we can't call the function um, from here, uh, from this client script. We can't do that. Okay. How can we do that? Let's understand first on that. So very first thing, very, uh, very first uh, thing is that from HTML, we can't call to the server side script. And even from the client side, we directly cannot call any server side script. So how do we do that? Okay, so very first method is that either you declare a, uh, a client a script include, client callable script include and call that, that's the another options. Otherwise, I'll tell you that one more option. If I go back to my documentation, service now provided one method called c.server.update. Uh, Using that also you can perform certain actions. So what does it mean by the c.server.update? Let's understand that. So whenever somebody click the close button, whenever somebody clicking the close button, we are calling to this client script and inside the client script, we have uh, these functions. So what we can do in this case, what in, in this client side, we can write that c.server.update. So there is a uh, one method called c.server.update. So if we apply that, what will be happen? Um, this function or this client, uh, using this client script, it, again call you the server script okay so let's understand one more time so whenever your widget is loading whenever very first thing the widget is loading the server side script is getting loaded and there is no issues on that so it's getting all the server side script and collecting the data after that um the client script all load function is loading uh, uh, loaded and then after that html part is loaded now in this case this function is uh, this is the function which is uh, dedicated to this client script. Until unless we are not calling these functions, this function will not execute it. Now somebody click this button. So let's say close button. Once somebody click this close button, what will be happen? These functions will be executed. And then this, in this function, if you put the c.server.update, using this, this widget will be like a, this widget will like a refresh. It will be again called to the whole server side script and again whole all load client side script, which is this part and then this part. So this kind of things will be work like that. Okay. So what we are going to do here uh, in this using, if we do the c.server.update, this function will be called and then we are going to update certain actions. Okay. So first thing first is that I'm going to show you a life cycle. So there is a two variable available into this, uh, into this uh, widget. One is the data widget, another is the input widget. So the, uh, there will be two variable. One is the data variable, another is the input variable. Whenever uh, that, uh, whenever your widget will be loaded, very first thing first, the server side script will be loaded and then data will have some value, okay? So we are putting some value inside the data. So we are storing some value inside the data. At that moment, the input will, actually empty there won't be any value inside the input now 
when uh, after that uh, it it loaded the client side script and in the client side script we have a data which is not empty but in um, input is a empty now once we call this server dot update the data value will be copied to the input value and then inside the input what will be happen i mean data is not empty and input is not empty so data value will be copied to the input value and now in the server side if we check that um, so after you do the uh, server.update it will again call to this server script and inside that data is not empty and input is not empty at that moment so very first thing if you refresh or do something the data will be the data will have some value input doesn't have any value right and similarly here you can see the data have some value and input have some value if you call this server.update so what we'll do here in this case what we'll do before we call to this c.server.update what we are going to do that we are going to use that c dot data dot um you know current incident number current incident and in this current incident what we are going to pass we are going to pass this id so what will be happen we are storing that data uh, dot current dot incident equal to id and now we are going to call that c dot server dot update and then what we are going to do once we do that what will be happen this input will be copied to the server i mean the data will be copied to that whatever value inside the data will be copied to the input so it means that right now after calling to this c dot server dot update what will be happen this input dot uh, uh, input dot uh, data dot current incident will be um, um, this input dot current in uh, incident will be also the id the current incident id now what we will do in this script what we are going to do here we are going to write a script here call if input is there it means that whenever first time the load widget will be loaded the input will not be executed i'll show you that and now we are going to put that input dot this uh, this case the current incident if there we are going to perform certain actions what actions we are going to do that so we are going to where uh, where gr update incident gr update here and then we are going to query to this incident table and in the incident table what we are going to query we are going to query gr dot update dot get and here we are going to query with this input number so if we find out this incident what we are going to do we are going to update this incident state equal to resolve or close anything we are looking for so let's go back here so in this incident table we are going to resolve this incident so what's the resolve uh, value let's see that what is the resolve value i guess 3 or 4 will uh, will get that resolve value state is resolved and if we run that copy query and then what we are going to do gr update dot state equal to 6 so 6 is the update value and then here gr update we are going to call that function before that what i'll do i will put some log here so gs dot uh, info message and then i'm going to put print the line 4 okay and then here i am going to put the line number 18. all right so let's understand one more time whenever the widget will be loaded first time this line will be executed and till this point this code will be executed till this point this code will be executed and then here this client skip will be uh, loaded but this function will not be executed the html code will be executed now somebody click the close button 
we are setting that id that is that current incident here and then we are calling that cr.server.update these functions once we call these functions these um, server script will be again loaded and then the line number four will be executed and after that what will be loaded this input blocks will be loaded because this time the input doesn't empty and it will have this uh, this line will be executed and it will be resolved that incident now after resolving that incident what we want we want that this value this current index value should be empty for that what we are going to do we are using that then function and inside that then we are going to use the function here and here in these functions we are going to put this input equal to empty again so that this port will not be executed anymore okay and now let's save this our let's save our code and see what is happening and before that i want to include the state field so what i'll do the json dot uh, state equal to gr inc dot get display value and i will say that i'm fetching the state and this state i am just going to print in our here so let's uh, put that here call well, i'm going to create one more header called state and i will print this state before this action so i will copy and here i'll say the state let's save that and see our page or our code is working fine or not so i'll go back to the my task so once you i loaded the task the line number four is executed but this line number 18 is not executed because this input field is empty at that moment so as I mentioned, the very first thing that input field is the empty. Now we can see we are getting the state and then we are uh, getting some of the state is new in progress. Once we click that uh, close incident, this incident has to be closed, right? So let's click the close incident. Once I clo click the close incident, you can see the line number 18 is executed and then incident, uh, you know, uh, one one also resolved but this incident state did not changes so um, i mean the state is not changes actually reflected so if i refresh actually this state changes will be shown that as a result but after that it it, it did not um execute it right so what we can do in this case so what we really can do this block if you see this input block if we put this block in the top so i'll cut this line and then paste here so what does it mean what it will be help i'll tell you that so what in that case what it will be help so let's say whenever very first thing the page is loaded um the on load function this block will not be executed directly this block will be executed and then it will get the current data it will be fetch the current data now once uh, you click that HTML button, it will go to this client script and then it will call to the c.server.update and then what will be happen? This server side script will be executed again and in this time, the first thing first, it will be uh, evaluate this line and then it will be resolved as that incident and after that it will be get this incident state so that it will get the updated value, okay? So let's see what is happening or, or whatever we are expecting is working fine or not. So let's refresh that page over here. So this is the page we are going to refresh. And now if we click the close incident or resolve incident here, so if somebody click the uh, close incident, very first thing is that line 18 will be executed. And after that line four is again executed and then it's marked as a result and the value getting changed immediately, the state value getting changed immediately. And we are seeing these value changes in upfront, okay? So that's it for today. I guess if you have any confusion, uh, anything, let me know. I will post whole code into my um, um, this uh, a page. If you need this code, please check that code. That's it for today. Thank you very much. Have a great day.